Hello, welcome back for some more Dutch oven cooking. My name is Keith McNeil. I'm a unit leader with Troop 54 in Worcester, Massachusetts. Today we're going to make some cornbread and a nice apple cake for dessert. I'm doing this to demonstrate that it doesn't require a search for Dutch oven recipes and Dutch oven cookbooks. You can convert just about any recipe that would go into a normal home oven into a Dutch oven delicacy. It's not that hard, and I'll show you how. Before we start cooking, it's always important to gather our gear. Uh, so you can see I have my Dutch ovens ready to go. I've got some charcoal, and I've assembled all my cooking gear and ingredients. So what we'll do now is get the uh, charcoal started and then while the briquettes are catching fire we can move on to uh, preparing our batters. To start our charcoal there's no need for lighter fluid so this falls in well with our guide to safe scouting where we don't want to use liquid fuels as accelerants. You just need some ordinary newspaper and a charcoal chimney. Uh, you can make one of these out of a number 10 tin can. Just remove the ends from both sides, drill some hole, cut some holes in the bottom, or cut slats and lift them up. And then uh, you can actually cut down the lid and uh, punch some holes in that and use it inside for a screen if you like. So the newspaper goes into the bottom, just needs a sheet or two. And we fill the chimney with charcoal. I use briquettes for Dutch oven cooking because it makes it easier to set the, regulate the temperature. As a rule of thumb, typically it's uh, one briquette for every 10 degrees. So if you're baking something at 350, you want 35 briquettes. The other thing to remember is since heat rises, most of our briquettes should be on top of our Dutch oven with a smaller number underneath. And a good rule of thumb for that is one third of the briquettes on the bottom and two thirds on top. All right, time to make the cornbread batter. Um, I've got the luxury of cooking from home this week uh, so uh, I've got a lot of my own cookware out of my kitchen, but uh, a lot of this stuff you can just make sure you pack it in your patrol bag, uh, patrol gear, uh, in your patrol bin. Um, you can also do some of this work ahead of time and simply package things in plastic bags or Tupperware containers or glass jars and put it in with your food to simplify preparation when you get to camp. Uh, for most baking, uh, you make a uh, mixture of dry ingredients and then a separate mixture of wet ingredients and then you put them both together uh, and then put into the pan to bake. So that's a, a real good way to think about it if you're doing some home prep is make a Ziploc bag full of, of your dry ingredients uh, already pre-measured and pre-mixed and then take uh, something like a mason jar or uh, other screw top container or, or uh, Nalgene bottle or something and you can pre-mix your wet ingredients. So this calls for cornmeal, three quarters of a cup. Down the bowl. Actually, I probably want a little bigger bowl to make sure I don't slop things over too much. Okay. And then I have the equivalent amount of all purpose uh, flour. In this case, actually, I'm using whole wheat because it is a little tougher these days to find just plain old bread, uh, all purpose flour at the store. Uh, almost as hard as toilet paper.
There we go. It's about three quarters of a cup. Then we need some stuff to make it rise. So we have a quarter cup of sugar to sweeten. Teaspoon and a half of salt. Do this off to the side because I don't want to get my cornbread too salty in case I miss over measure. Teaspoon and a half of baking powder. This is this is part of what will make it rise. Make sure you're grabbing the baking powder and not the baking salt. Not baking soda. I only need a teaspoon of that. Flavor my cornbread with some uh, chopped scallions and a little bit of diced jalapenos. Since I wear contacts, uh, when I cook in the campsite, I still like to cook with spicy foods, and I use a lot of onion and garlic and hot peppers. So I wear rubber gloves to make sure uh, I don't run the risk of getting this the hot oils uh, from the chilies or even the, uh, the oils from the onions and the garlic into my eyes when I take my contacts in and out. I'm going to mix that together a little whisk. Uh, this is good because just in case there's any lumps uh, of the uh, baking soda or the baking powder, this will break up. Uh, there's nothing worse than biting into a, a piece of cornbread or a piece of cake and getting that lump of astringent, uh, puckering baking soda or baking powder. So, all my dry ingredients are ready to go. Now it's time for my wet ingredients. Alright, for wet ingredients, I've got three quarters of a cup of buttermilk. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, a cup and a quarter of buttermilk. Uh, and I'm going to mix in two large eggs. those together. some melted butter to that. So we get half a stick of melted butter. We'll 
add that to our buttermilk and eggs. Uh, the buttermilk and eggs, again, you can uh, pre-mix those at home and put them into a container and then melt some butter when you get to camp and add it in. Uh, you don't want to do that beforehand, otherwise you'll end up with a very lumpy mess that won't blend well with your flour. So instead of using a mixing bowl to make cleanup a little easier, um, you can also use plastic bags. Put your dry ingredients in, in a big plastic bag and then you can pour your liquid ingredient right on top and mix it in the bag. Uh, seal the bag, knead it very well, make sure everything's all thoroughly mixed. Again, you don't want to have uh, doughy surprises when you uh, finish baking things and go to serve it. Okay. Pour this into our dry ingredients and mix. Then we'll be ready for the Dutch oven. You can see our coals are ready, so we can start prepping that. There, right, I've got my ingredients ready for the final mix. Uh, I've got one uh, Granny Smith apple chopped. I've got a half cup of buttermilk. Um, this is a uh, stick of butter creamed with a, a cup of sugar. Uh, I did that in the house to be a little bit easier. Again, that's something you could do um, and ahead of time and put it in a plastic bag and throw it in your cooler and have it ready if you want to do this at camp. Uh, but there's no reason if you've got the equipment that you can't do it at home like I'm doing now. In here, I've got a cup and a half of flour, a teaspoon of baking soda, teaspoon of cinnamon and an eighth of a teaspoon of clove so this is all in a sifter rather than using the whisk uh, this will help break up any lumps uh, we'll get it down into the bowl uh, we'll mix part of this with the wet ingredients and we'll put the apple in with the rest and then we'll get it in this case I'm gonna go into a cake pan and put that in the Dutch oven uh, to show you a little bit different way you can use a Dutch oven so I mixed an egg, um, with my buttermilk, and a half cup of my flour mixture into my creamed butter and sugar mix. And the rest of my flour I tossed my diced apple in. So now that will all go together and into our cake pan. All right, so our batter is in the cake pan. You can see in the bottom of my Dutch oven I've got a trivet so that the cake pan won't sit directly on the bottom of the oven. Uh, so it'll act like a more like a true oven. So the pan's going to go on top of that trivet. We'll put the lid on, add the coals. Again, this is baking at 350, so uh, about 12 coals underneath, 24 on top. And this one's going in for half an hour. All right, so we have both uh, cooking away. I'll uh, probably start another chimney of a few more char uh, a few more briquettes uh, just in case we need to replenish uh, so that everything stays hot and even. Uh, so I'll see you again in about a half an hour. The cornbread is ready right on time. I uh, tested it with a toothpick, stuck a toothpick in, it comes out nice and clean. Uh, you can see we are good to go. So the uh, Apple cake still has about another 20 minutes on it because we started that one later, but that's okay. We're eating that for dessert. It's been 30 minutes, but my apple cake is still pretty gooey. Sometimes Dutch oven cooking can be a bit of trial and error. So we'll uh, put the lid back on, uh, set another timer, uh, probably add a few more coals, and check back later. There we go, 15 minutes and a few more coals later. And look at that, my toothpick comes out nice and clean, and dessert is ready. Well, thank you for joining me. I um, uh, hope you learned something today that you can take back to your backyard or your next camp out. Uh, like I said, you can cook just about anything in a Dutch oven that you can cook in your oven at home. 
Just keep in mind those rules of thumb for a 12-inch Dutch oven. Uh, one charcoal briquette for every 10 degrees, so a 350 oven is 35 briquettes. Uh, put a third of your briquettes underneath and two-thirds on top because heat rises, so you want more coals on top because a lot of that heat's going to be going up and not down into your oven. Thanks again for joining me, and hopefully I'll see you at camp one of these days.